before he dies, he sent a servant of his to an area close to Baghdad by the name of Madain. Madain. Imam was in Samarra. The servant, he told him, I want you to take these letters of mine to some people in Madain. And they will write a response back to you. Bring the response back. It will take you 15 days going and coming. You will enter Samarra on the 15th day. When you enter Samarra, you'll hear people crying for me. I would have gone, I would have died. You will enter into the house and find my body lying down. He says, then what should I do, Ya Ibn Rasulullah, when that happens? He says, you follow the one who will ask you about the letters, the responses. He will ask you. And the one who will pray over my dead body, he will pray. And the one who will ask about the belt. Belt. The servant said, I was too embarrassed to ask the Imam what belt. So they kept quiet. Three signs, right? Pray over my body. Ask for what? Letters. And the third thing, the belt. The servant says, I went. I came back truly, as the Imam said, indeed, it took me 15 days. The 15th day I came back, I saw the Imam's body, Salamullah Alaihi. He was given the poison, Salamullah Alaihi. When they gave him the poison, they increased the guards around him. And they brought him doctors as a cover. The government is saying, look, we're looking after him, huh? Look, all these doctors, we brought all these doctors. And they brought all these guards to monitor because they're looking for who? They know he has a son or he should have a son. And his son will be who? The one who will inherit the earth. They know this. They know the Ahadi. They're looking for that son. And they sent not only guards, male guards, female guards to inspect the wives. To see if there's any one of them is pregnant right now. They did not know he was born. So imagine what kind of security he had to live under. As he was in prison, as he was given the poison, he had no access with people. He was surrounded by guards, doctors brought by the government itself. Male and female people, spies looking at him and his wives. This was his condition, Salamullah alayhi. Imagine. How mazlumin were Ahlul Bayt, Salamullah alayhi. When God forbid someone is on his deathbed, he wants to see his family around him. He wants to see his children standing next to him. He wants to bid farewell to them. His last moments in dunya. Imam Salamullah alayhi had these prisoners, these prison guards, the government standing all around him. No access to his own family members. Rather, he has to worry about his wives being inspected by these guards, these female guards. Not an easy state, Salamullah alayhi. This is what they had to go through so that you and I can pray. You and I can have good manners. You and I can become good Muslims and good Shia. Isn't it time that we actually now follow them? Isn't it time that we change? This is what they went through in their lives. And then he left dunya, salamullah alayhi, alone, gharib in Samarra. And he is still gharib. The servant says, I came back. I saw his body lying down there. I said, what is the matter? They told me the imam has died, salamullah alayhi. I saw the servant, a servant of the imam coming to Ja'far al kadhab and he told him, your brother has died, so will you lead the Salat? This man, the servant who came back, he said, my goodness, is he going to be the Imam? It will be a disaster. He knew who he was. He says, but I kept there waiting. He says, Ja'far came to lead the Salat. He stood there on the body. Just as he stood, I saw a young boy. A young boy. 
His face is so bright with Iman, with Noor. He came out, he said, Uncle, step aside. You know only me who can pray over the body of my father. The uncle did not even know of the existence of the Mahdi Sallallahu Alaihi He did not even know. He did not even argue with him because of the haiba of the Imam, that honor. Although he was five years old, a child in our terms. But he had that respect, that honor of an Imam. Told him, uncle, step aside. He came and he said, Allahu Akbar. He prayed the Salat over the body of his father, Salamullahi Alayhi. Then he took care of the burial of his father. And he buried his father, Salamullahi Alayhi, in Samarra, Gharib. Then he turned to that servant afterwards and told him, where are the letters? The servant gave it the letters. He said, these are two signs now, fulfilled. He says, as we were sitting down, a group of visitors came from the city of Om. They came to Ja'far, thinking that he is the Imam. They did not know. They said, we have some money with us. Before we give it to you though, if you are truly the Imam, tell us how much money is here. Ja'far got upset. He said, what, do you want me to know the ghaib? The knowledge of the unseen? A servant came out from a room inside. He told them, the master, the mawla, says, give me the belt. And you have 1,000 dinars in the belt. They gave him the belt. The servant says, the three signs were fulfilled. I knew this was my imam. I say, may our imam, this is the imam of our time now. On this day, he must be in deep grief for the loss of his father. Because he remembers this. He saw this, brothers and sisters. But I turn to his father, Imam al-Askari, alayhi salam. And I say, Yabna Rasulillah. Every father has a right over his son. So I'm requesting you to ask your son to attend our majlis. To ask your son to consider us, inshallah, among their sincere followers, a sincere Shia. To ask your son to attend the time when we are going to be in the grave. And I say to the Imam, Salamullah alayhi, our Imam, Yabna Rasulullah, you came to the body of your father, Al Imam Al Askari alayhi salam. But who was there on the day of Ashura for Abi Abdullah al Hussein in Karbala? Zainab alayhi salam stood there looking at the body of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. A body without a head, a body covered in spears and arrows. And then she saw the family of Al Hur ibn Yazid al Riyahi, Rudwanullah ta'ala alayhi. They came and they said to Umar ibn Sa'd, we want the man, we want our man, we don't want you to sever his head or to bury him, leave him here. He said, take him, he's yours. She saw the family taking the body of horror and taking it away. At that moment, she turned to Medina and she said, Assalamu alayka ya Jadda. Assalamu alayka ya Rasulallah. This is Hussein. This is your Hussein lying here on the plains of Karbala. This is Hur. His family just came to pick him up. Doesn't this man, this Gharib, have a family who will come to look after him? Doesn't your son have someone to bury him? Isn't there anyone to look after his family and children? She turned towards Kufa and cried, Aywa Aliya! Aywa Abata! Here is your daughter Zainab, Gharibatun fi Karbala! I am a stranger here in Karbala! No helper, no supporter! 
Where is your Abbas, Ya Zainab? He is next to the river of Furayat with no right hand or left hand, with an arrow in his eye. His head is on the spear looking at me. Aywa Aliya, Aywa Musibata, Inna Lillah. وإنا إليه راجعون وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين